Praise God for it. We are living in the last of the last days. I want to welcome again my good friend, Dr. Lee Hance. Uh, he's here with us, and we're just discussing some things from the Scripture. And uh, I believe uh, if you'll stay here with us, it's going to be a blessing to you. Amen. Uh, Gary, when you talked about that book of Revelations, I tell you, every time you talk about that book, there's something goes off in my spirit. <laughs> Amen. Because I've been in that book most of my life. I've said about 10 times I've uh, taught that book. Mm. And when you look at that, look at that book, and we talked about the churches. You know, when they talked about the churches, every one of those churches had problems. Yeah. They were problem churches. And somebody said, yeah. well, I wonder if I can apply that today. Well, you can apply that today because all churches today have seen the same problems they went through. That's for sure. They had, some, they had, they had a, a core of believers. They had unbelievers. They had people doing things they shouldn't do. Sure. And um, sometimes when you look at all of those things and what's being preached in that, comparing it with the day, what has been preached with the day, a lot of people don't know anything about the Holy Ghost because it's not being preached. Yeah, you know, it's interesting about those churches in Revelation. The only, the only church that Jesus didn't have anything to say about anything negative about was the the smallest church and the poorest church that's exactly right <laughs> so yeah. they they uh uh he just said man keep up the good work you're doing a good job you know <laughs> so if you're a small church out there if you don't have much money hey god bless you you're probably right smack dab right in the middle of yeah you're right in the middle of the will of god that's for sure but all of these, you know, you got to remember all of these things that came to pass in that book that was shown to John in that book was shown to him in the spirit. Yeah. Now, when you get in the supernatural, and that's what the Holy Ghost does. He takes you into the supernatural. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're speaking in tongues, you can't do this of yourself. No. It's a gift given unto to you by God. No, it's and a miracle. It's, it's a miracle. It's, it's yeah. God speaking to you. And the Lord said, just like on the day of Pentecost, all of those people... You know, start preaching. I'll give you a good little humor story. I was praying with a man in revival one time, and he said, and I said, have you received the Holy Ghost? And he looked me right in the face, Brother Gary, and said, I want the same things those dudes got in the upper room. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I just laughed. He said, I want the same thing those dudes got in the upper room. Amen. And that upper room is experience is just as real and alive today in the Holy Ghost as it was back on the day of Pentecost. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, it reminds me of the of the scripture that Jesus spoke prior to the day of Pentecost. He gathered his disciples and those that uh, gathered to him after his resurrection. And he said this to them. He said, and ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost part of the earth. So Jesus was interested in his church being filled with power. And I often tell people when I'm ministering in churches, I uh, travel and minister in various churches, uh, I tell them, you know, the most important thing you'll ever do as a human being is receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The most important thing you'll do as a Christian is receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Well, let me let me tell you something about this baptism of the Holy Spirit when you... when. Uh, the word says we shall receive power to be mm -hmm. a witness. And, um, of course, you knew I had eight children, and my children Whoa. growing up, they used, to eight say, children. they used to say in the car when we would meet somebody, all of them would look at their watch and say, let's time Dad and see how long it takes him to talk to this man before he starts talking about Jesus Christ. Yeah. And asking him, does he know the Lord is his personal Savior? Sure. And then you'd hear the kids yell out in the car, I won, I won. It, it was only <laughs> yeah. a minute that he talked to that man. But you know what, Gary, that fullness that God has given you, yeah. you know, is that out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Oh, and he's yeah, speaking absolutely. of the spirit that you, you're so full that yeah. you overflow. And remember, in, in ministering the word in the Holy Ghost, you can never preach to people until you preach to people out of the overflow of your spirit. Yeah. You, yeah. you, you can't come and preach a, a half full you got to have an overflow yourself. Yeah. And when it overflows, it's like an artesian well. It just keeps bubbling and bubbling Amen. and bubbling out of you. Amen. If it's in there, it's got to come it's out. It's going to come out. It's yeah, no question out. about it. So, yeah, when you're, uh, this is what Jesus was saying. He says, get filled with power. Uh, he doesn't want us to go through life uh, uh, weak kneed, lily livered, Casper milk toast, right. uh, uh, cowering and, and uh, fearful. Christianity. He wants us to be bold as lions. He wants us to be filled with power. 
He wants us to have a Christianity that takes the enemy's camp. Amen. And uh, the only way we're going to do that is by being filled with the Spirit. Well, you know, there, there's times in my life, in my ministry, I've been in the ministry over 60 years. There's time in my life that I, I just got bold. I just got bold to turn around right to Satan, looking him right in the face one on one, saying, Look, you don't know who you're dealing with. Yeah. Because the greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And the greater one is living in me. And I'm going to put the greater one on you. Amen. And that's the Holy Ghost. I'm going to put the Holy Ghost on you. When I put the Holy Ghost on you, you're going to you're not going to be coming around like you did, and you're going to be leave this temptation coming around. You know? That's right. That's right. You know, truth be told, Lee, um, the world looks on the church and they you know they see our foibles and our failures and they see our flesh, but the truth of the matter is, we're the ones in charge. Until until we're taken out of here. We're the ones with the authority. We're the right. ones with the power. We're the ones that can pray the power of God into the earth. We're the ones that can pray heaven on earth. Uh, we're the ones that are making a difference. We are salt. We are light. And uh, if we will stand in all that God's given us in Christ Jesus, we are the head and not the tail, above only and not Praise beneath. God. We are the blessed of the Lord. And, oh. and uh, we need to start living our lives just like that. But you can't do it without the power of God. You've uh, got to have the Holy Ghost. You got to have the power of the Holy Ghost. Gary, when you start talking like that, you you kind of like push my Holy Ghost up. And I mean, show the hot thing about the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. But, but, so. You know, when I when I Amen. preach like this and hear that, it's almost if you're not preaching the the the. Word of God, and the Word of God isn't coming out of you through the Holy Ghost. You can dismiss your services like this. I'm going to pray for all of you cowards that are out there. You can leave the church this morning and go back out in the world. Or yeah. you can leave the church this morning full of the anointing of the Holy Ghost yeah. and yeah. make things happen in the world. Without yeah. a doubt, worldwide, and you've been with me in India, Pentecost and the Holy Ghost is where it's at. Yeah, they're oh, the, no question the, about it. Without a doubt, the Holy Ghost is the mover and shakers of the world. You know, um, some may be aware of this, some may not, but uh, about 1905, uh, we saw a last day's outpouring of the Holy Ghost in a little place in Los Angeles called Azusa Street, mm -hmm. where uh, a little black man uh, was uh, preaching the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And uh, at that time, uh, through that revival, about one half of one percent of all Christians worldwide were filled with the Holy Spirit and received this Pentecostal experience. Now, a hundred years later, they estimate worldwide that one half of all Christians wow. are now filled with the Holy Ghost, have spoken in tongues, and have had this Pentecostal experience. And uh, sometimes we wonder, you know, you know, some of you listening to this video might think, well, if that's the case, where are they? I'll tell you where they are. They're in Russia. They're in Africa. They're in China. They're in South America. Uh, but uh, a lot of the folks in, in America, in the United States, have rejected the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So we need to be preaching this. We need to be bold with this. That's exactly well, right. They, they, I just believe without a doubt they, in every church, that uh, is preaching Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost should be active. Mm, he, amen. He should be the he should be the message giver that is taking place in that church. Amen. Lee, I got a tongue. I'm going to share it, and you go ahead and interpret. Cobrate shekiasa vronto shambrasta shiki roto shafrate shegye paleontoso. Men today have not declared this one that is called the Holy Ghost because men become afraid. Men become afraid of what might happen in their churches. But I say unto you, if you proclaim and preach this, you shall see marvelous things. My spirit shall come within you, and you shall do supernatural, supernatural things if you turn loose and let me guide and lead you and turn loose and believe on me. Mm, wow, that's powerful. Uh, you know, I want to comment on that because uh, as that came forth, uh, two things stood out to me in that word. Uh, the first thing was men aren't proclaiming these things. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit went on to say, if we begin to proclaim these things, he's going to pour out his presence and pour out his power in right. our midst. 
Uh, you know what that tells me, uh, Lee? You get what you preach. Exactly right. And you know, people wonder, well, why don't we have miracles? Why don't we have healings? Why don't we have God moving in our church? Well, what are you preaching? Exactly I mean, right. if you're preaching the U.S. News and World Report, that's exactly what you're going to get. But if you're preaching, if you're preaching Pentecost, you're going to get Pentecost. If you're preaching the power of God, you're going to get the power of God. Exactly right. And Jesus said, you know, if I be lifted up, and who lifts up Jesus? The Holy Ghost. Amen. He said, if I be lifted up, listen, I don't need, I don't need on Sunday morning five ways to bake a cake. Yeah. I don't need. Uh, three things that will help you to get across town. <laughs> I need to hear something from God. I need we to hear something that, oh, yeah. that God has seasoned that we with the Holy Ghost the and will speak into that man's heart we and he can proclaim it. Something and that feeds our spirit. Feeds our spirit and we, we got to be bold and, and, and be alive with the Holy Ghost. Hail the blessed hour We shall see the King when he